Right, you legends, it's time to get real serious. If you're making trades this week, these are the only people you should be bringing in, especially in that top bracket in our guns. So we're going to start with hookers, and our first guy is going to be obviously Jaden Braley. Absolutely killing at the moment, averaging 80. You need to get him in your squad. He's obviously already at 716k, but he's going to go up into the 800, so he's got 100k to make. He's scoring amazingly. He's even turned into a captaincy option. So he's number one on your list. Number two on your list, I think, is going to be Mr. Reed Mane. Absolutely killing it this year. Averaging 77 right now. I think he's going to average somewhere in the mid-60s this year. He's doing a little bit of attack now as, as well as you know playing the, obviously the 80 minutes, but, but getting over 50 tackles in the majority of games and doing really well. So he's going to be number two on your hit list this week. And number three is going to be Andrew McCulloch. So for him, he's, he's your most consistent scorer. He's up to 760k now, which puts him averaging in you know, the high 50s. But I think he's going to be averaging in the 60s for the year. So he's got another sort of 50k or so to make and will be a great option and you know, very safe in your squad. If you need a hooker though, because you know the majority of these teams right now, we still have Little, we've got Turpin, we've got these types of guys. I think you know McCulloch, if you haven't got him and you've only got sort of you know, Braley, and maybe little, then I think that he's he's someone that you could bring in as well. <clears throat> so there are hookers for, for our starters. And if we're moving to to the middles and the edge, it's really only a few guys. Payne Haas, you can probably wait a couple of weeks. Uh, at this stage, as he, his price is going to be dropping down a little bit. But our main couple of guys are going to be Toe Harris, averaging 62. He's even dropped a little bit in price since since the start of the year. I think 14K since he's starting, he's averaging 62. So uh, tough going if you uh, started with him there, but you can pick him up now for 793k, which I think is an absolute steal for a guy that's a dual position, not playing Origin. You need to be targeting him this week. Also, Angus Crichton, I think at 815k, slightly more expensive than what Toyo is, but um, an amazing player and you know has a floor of around that mid 50s, and then and then a high and, and highs are you know up to 80 to 90. So uh, amazing player. I think you need to get him in your squad and also Dave Fafita. These are the three guys you need to target in the mids and the edge position. Anyone else right now is a little bit of a speculation or you know, you, you, you're, you're chasing points. You know, well, let's have a look at what, what we've got here in, in the mids, for example. Isaiah Yeo is just going to do okay. Pango Jr. has come off a shocker. Tamalolo will, will drop in price for a little bit. Clem's carrying an injury. Barnett's carrying a little bit of an injury too. Murray just come off a head injury. Uh, you know, People are thinking about trading him out, but he's definitely a hold this week. Fodawaka, Paulo, Saifidi, all these guys are just okay. Uh, you know, not the top line keepers, whereas those three are. Adam Elliott come off a lower one, and you're going to expect lower games like that when he doesn't score a try, and they're in a team that's not as great. And you look down the list, and there's no real other guys to think about other than maybe Papali'i, but he's going to be you know, a bench player, you know, averaging 50 minutes or something. Can he score 55 to 60 in that time? I don't think he can over the, the entirety of the season. So, you know, that's, that's the middle position. And then our edge... It's, uh, it's, you know, you've only got really frizz there, but he's just come off a low game as well. Madison's coming off a head knock. You know, it's all the very similar plays. Hudson Young will do okay, but he's going to be very similar to Elliott, so I wouldn't be, you know, rushing him in your squad this week. Tupinoa has just come off an injury, Capewell, etc. All right, so plenty going on in there, but only three real guys I'd be targeting. And if we move to our halves position, then I've only given you two guys to target this, this week. It's only Cleary and Mitch Moses. Everyone else, I think, is just doing okay. Munster's going to be a little bit up and down. Moses is, has shown that over the last couple of years, he's a clear keeper and can average around that 60 when he's on the park. And you can see that he's you know, he's taking over the majority of the work for that eel side. If, and if they're doing well, he's going to smash it. If they're not doing so well, he'll probably average in the 50s. But they're the only two guys out of all, the, all this list that I'd be targeting at this stage. You'd want to see what happens with Foggs if he comes back you know, and he's back to his kicking goals and kicking in general play well with his quad injury. Uh, then, then he could be a good target now that he's down around the 600k mark, uh, which is interesting too. But in terms of our guns, these are the types of guys that you want to be focusing on. And if you're enjoying this type of content, please hit like and subscribe, guys. I really appreciate it. And we'll, we'll move on to the centers now. And there's a couple more options in here. And this is one that a few people are targeting, especially last week, but also this week. As they're running out of cover, they might have traded out Avarillo, which was their cover. Um, so types of guys I'm thinking about in this one is Zach Lomax. Came off a, a light week on the weekend, but you know they're doing pretty well, the Dragons, and he should uh, he should benefit from that. He will be a keeper at the end of the year. Currently only averaging 40, but I'd see him getting into the mid 50, uh, mid 40s as he was last year. Joey Manu is also a good option. I just brought him in last week, so I think you should, could still target him this week. He didn't do too much and got 41, so that was sweet. 
Uh, Gags, I'm leaving for this week. Still think he's a he's a keeper, but for him, he's going to be playing Origin and misses a couple of games over that period. So you know, being round five, I'm gonna I would leave him at this stage. Tyron Peach is also an option. Hopefully, he plays. He spends more the majority of his time at thirteen and not in the halves or, or moving around. And that's the only worry with him is his utility value. So for him, I think he can average in the mid forties in the centres for you. Uh, Kotrick, I'm leaving. Olam, I'm leaving. Graham's the only one I'm, I'm targeting at this stage. At 470k, I think he's definitely a keeper. He was at the back end of last year. And once he starts scoring some tries, he hasn't done yet, uh, then he can average in the mid-40s to 50s, I think, going forward. So they're the only guys I'm looking at uh, in in the centres, actually, apart from uh, Momorowski, who's in who's in my side as well. So I'd be targeting him in a great Panther side. He should be able to keep his spot as he's been playing pretty well. Rapana, after... Last week, I think he was kind of a buy 20, you know, 20k or so ago. After he, I think he went up about 20k. Was that right? Slightly going to load for us. What's he going to tell us? 29k. Yeah. So after him gaining 29k, I think he's probably not a buy anymore at 540. When you've got these other guys as better options, but yeah, these centers. And moving on to our wing fullback. And Ponga comes back this week. So I think he's a target over the next few weeks. If you want to bring him now, if you love watching him play, he's a gun. He's our second best fullback after Teddy. And then you've got Pap there now as well, who's going to round out that top three. So Pap's going to be your next option as a target, and so is Teddy. So all three of those guys, if you can get them in without you know blowing up your team and, and trading keepers or whatever, then then please do. Uh, Brian To'o is also a great option. He's going to be a keeper in our wing fullback this year, probably our fourth best option. You got guys like RTS, who I'm not going to say is a target this week. He's only had the one massive game. Latrell, I'm not saying is a target. Adam Dewey, you can think about, but I'm not. I'm, I'm going to wait another week or two on him before making that decision. Yes, his price might go up by then, but I think it's worth waiting for these types of players who have never been a keeper before in their position. Uh, he will get dual position uh, very soon. In after, I think it's in round six. Uh, Brimson, I'm also targeting at the moment. If he continues to do okay, or you see signs of, of what he did the back end of last year. I think he's going to be, you know, begin to be someone that you'd like to bring into your side. But there you go, guys. That's my thoughts on those guns. And then around that, just just think about your the types of players you, you're looking to trade out to get these guys. People are looking to trade out Brooks. He's still got money to make. He's averaging over fifty. You know, over fifty is a seven hundred k player. If he can hold that, yes, he might be losing a few kick meters to someone like Dewey. But they play the Cowboys this week. Just don't trade those guys out. You know, if you're looking the rest of the squad, who else could people trade out? There's not really many here that I'd like to trade out. Liniu is there at 376, but he's still got a tiny bit of money to make. There's a chance he could go bonkers. He has a great PPM. These are all things you got to think about. And, you know, Twile had an average game. I wouldn't be thinking about targeting him, but I wouldn't be selling him, for example. So uh, that's it with the um, the guns, guys. Just wanted to, to bring that to you nice and quick and just get in your mind the types of guys you want to be thinking about this week. Because the rest of them, I think, are... A little bit speculative, and they could go really well for you. They could uh, they could have a down bunch of weeks and lose you some money and, and lose you some points there, and, and you're frustrated and you want to trade them out again. So the other guys are nice and safe, I think, and will be guns in their respective positions. So I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next one.